Hello booktube, today is, well the day you watch it, it will be my 33rd birthday and I've seen this video go around and it looks like so much fun and since I'm an avid collector of mugs, within reason, um, books and mugs, my one weakness, we're going to, I want to do the, the, I'm not sure what it's called but you kind of match a book up with one of your favorite coffee mugs. Now I have a lot of mugs here. Woo! And I only chose a certain amount of ones. Um, all of the Starbucks ones, I have uh, some from places that mean something to me just because um, I have family there or I was there with a friend or a friend sent me one. I have one from Washington and I've never been there, but a friend from Washington brought it down with me, brought it down for me. And so I didn't purchase or I didn't bring those out here to try to fit with um, a book. I think if I do that, it'll be a video all of its own. Um, that would be kind of fun, like matching a Starbucks uh, place mug with a book around that place. So I'm gonna save that for another video, but today I'm gonna share uh, some of my favorite mugs, the meanings behind them, and a book that I recommend to go with it. Now, I also have a cold. But some of these, um, I only have on Kindle or I have listened on Audible but everything is going to be linked down below in the description box so you can find it um, there for your perusal interest whatever the hardest part of this video is going to be which mug to start with but um, there is a significance to my mugs every mug here that I own somebody has purchased for me um, without further ado, let's get into today's video. Whew, I have a mixture here of classics, of nonfiction, some contemporary, Kindle, hard. So let's just kind of jump right in. So <laughs> the first one is this one, and it's from my friend up in California. This is so funny. It's one can't even. Who are these little people, and why do they keep asking me for breakfast? Okay, it's starting to come back to me. And mom's awake. Um, this is more of my tea mug. This is not enough for a cup of coffee for me, unless maybe it's my second or third cup. And at that point, we're more at this stage right here. But for this mug, I want to recommend a Kindle book called um, the Aggie's Inheritance series. And the first one is Ready or Not. And it's by Shatona Havig. It's going to be linked down below for you. And it is the story of a young girl fresh out of college that inherits her sister's eight kids. Her sister and her husband were in a car crash and she inherits the eight kids. And it's actually, um, Shatona Havoc is my mom, and it's actually was, began when we were all growing up and my mom kept getting, I don't know how you do it all with nine kids, and she's like, well I didn't get them all at once. And then she started thinking, but what if somebody did get them all at once? Like, how would they do that? And from that sparked my mom's actual writing story, journey, whatever you want to call it. She is such a prolific writer. I have not read all of my mom's books because there's no way I could keep up on it. Um, but I really recommend the Aggie series. It's so funny, hilarious. Um, a lot of it just brings nostalgia from my growing up years, what it was like growing up. Um, Aggie belting out hymns in the shower when she's frustrated. Like mother like. Uh oh. Anyway, that's the one I want to recommend for that. Okay, this next one, these actually have two that go with it. It's also, these are also from that same person. I have um, Magnolia. So when she went to Texas, Waco, Texas and got to see Chip and Johanna Gaines and one of my favorite ever blessed mug and actually I broke mine in the um this one has a double meaning I broke the one that she had given me and my sister found me another one so this kind of has a to dual purpose but both of these kind of make me think of simplicity and I think even the color scheme is kind of funny so I want to recommend Joshua Becker's the minimalist tome and it is probably the biggest book uh, or the 
the book that really helped understand minimalism for me in a in a full aspect. I was trying so hard to look at how people were doing it and Joshua Becker kind of pulled all of that from the side and kind of broke it down into story form which is how my mind um, connects. And so that one was so good even my at the time seven eight year old son he's now nine um, wanted to listen to more of Joshua Becker. So I recommend that one, especially if you want a simplistic, um, uh, minimalist home. I think minimalist, uh, c there's such a trend now for it, and I don't want to be a trend. I want it to be a lifestyle that I'm going towards. So I really recommend that one. Okay, we've done a lot of Kindle books here. Let's hold up, um, let's hold up an actual book. So I have this one. This is from our local coffee shop, and this um, has, yes, on the back, it's a Christian coffee shop, and they're actually really good. At, they have, believe it or not, I actually prefer them over Starbucks, which is really good because Starbucks is about 45 minutes away. But y'all, when we go up there, I get Starbucks, but all that to say, I'm really happy with finding a good coffee, um, good coffee place. Now, um... For this mug, here, it's called the Filling Station, and it's so adorable. For that one, I'm going with Coffee is My One Weakness. Now, I'm stretching this book recommendation a little bit because my whole one weakness thing, Coffee is My One Weakness, Books Are My One Weakness, is actually taken from the TV show that was adapted from this book. And that TV show is Lark Rise to Candleford, and the book is the same name. However, Dorcas, who is one of my favorite characters in the TV show, I don't think um, makes, I don't remember her being in the books. Now, I got this book when my daughter, when my eldest, she's going to be 14 this year, when I was pregnant with her. And anything that happens when I'm pregnant, I do not retain. Um, but I read a lot of books during that time and somebody had sent me this from England. And it was a beautiful edition. But... Um, but I learned of the TV series and watched it and I was like, I don't remember half of this being the same. It's not. You get more of Laura's story as a younger years, kind of reflections of a town, but not so much what you see in the TV series. But the TV series is phenomenal. So I would like to recommend Lark Rise to Candleford. Read this first, then watch the series so that... Um, you get to enjoy both, to be honest. I think that was um, the good thing about that is that I, I enjoyed both. They were not similar, but I really enjoyed them. So that is my recommendation for that. Um, so this one, I purchased this one, but I purchased it after I said I didn't purchase any. I actually purchased this and I purchased a matching one for my friend in Washington. And she loves bees and this, of course, has a bee. And this is a good, like... This is a good mug. This works for both coffee and for tea. Let me show you just, it's wider. It's about the same, no, it's a little shorter, but it's wider, but it holds more, trust me on that. So for this one, I would also like to recommend a book that we both love and has a bee in the title, and that is The Murmur of Bees by Sophia Segovia, I believe. Um, again, check the description box below. Um, I actually got this book as a uh, free recommendation from Kindle and I listened to it and it was so moving. It was a little mystery but it's a lot of history and it was just really good and then I found out that my friend had read it and loved it too so that was really fun um, just to kind of have that connection back and forth. Again, you know me, I love connections as I put books with um, mugs and prayers and friends and all of that. So if you have not read The Murmur of Bees, if you like historical fiction, I think you will really enjoy that. And the person that read The Murmur of Bees did a really good job. And um, one day I'll actually hold, own the hardcover because I would actually like to experience reading it for myself. So, okay, let's do this one. This is a nonfiction. This is a mug for my mom and it's kind of a joke. I actually use this mug uh, for my husband when I make him tea just to be kind of ornery. 
And this is this mug. But what better book to recommend than a marriage book? Now, I actually have two books to recommend, but the first one I don't even have. I just have the other one that he wrote, and I love Sacred Marriage, but I'm holding up Sacred Parenting because Sacred Marriage is still in a box somewhere. Yep. But um, Sacred Marriage has the tagline, what if marriage is to make you holy rather than happy? And it's not so much, he does this, this is how you should react, but it is, what does the Bible tell you to do in marriage? What is your role in the marriage? It's not about learning to work together in in that aspect is actually more about what is your heart in this and I really really loved it it's one that I need to read like every five years and I've only read it like once every eight years um I think I've read it twice now but it's time to read again so I really recommend that but another one that I recently read is by Paul David Tripp and it is um oh, you guys, I'm going to leave it linked down below, but I recently read that one this year. actually listened to it on Audible, and it was one of those that just hit you with the gut. It, again, goes over what your role is rather than, um, he doesn't love me enough, he doesn't do this. And it's more about this man that real, or this man who wanted to write what our role is with God and then with our husbands and then following that pyramid that God has set up and it's it was really good we're actually reading Paul David Tripp's um uh parenting book and that one's taken us a long time to get through just my husband and I want to read it together and we don't always have time so it's like one chapter every three months so but that one is really good as well and I highly recommend that okay um, let's get the last Kindle book out of the way. So I have here a uh, Pioneer Woman mug. I actually used this this morning. So there's a little coffee residue, but it's got butterflies, which um, butterflies mean so much to me. I love butterflies. I love pansies. Um, but it makes me think of the um, first, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that word transform is actually metamorphosis. And so it's what a caterpillar does. You know, we, we take the ugliness that we are as sinful creatures and then we put on Christ and we are transformed into something beautiful like a butterfly. Uh, but for Pioneer Woman, um, this was actually given to me by Julie Crickey. Uh, she has a YouTube channel here. But it also reminds me of another mug that I had from my friend Sharon. She also sent me a beautiful Pioneer Woman mug and it broke. <laughs> so one of the things I forgot to mention that when I have my mugs like this from different people, when I use them, I make a deliberate effort to think and pray about that person that day. And so most of the time I'm not thinking about the coffee mugs I pull. Sometimes I'm like, I need a big cup today. And this is, this is a big one, y'all. So that's the closest, but let's, let's compare it to this one. Let's see, there we go. It's a big mug. It's um, a full Keurig plus a small Keurig um, in there. Now, I try to, I just pray for them and I whatever I pull out is what I use. Especially because it just depends on how the kids put the cups away. Because they use my cups too for water. Anyway, it's mainly so that they can remember which one's theirs. But for this book and a recommendation that I have... I wanted something Pioneer and I could have done, um, it's actually out of the earshot, but I could have done the Laura Ingalls books because, I mean, what kid wasn't influenced by those in some way, but I chose to do Eleanor Pruitt Stewart or Eleanor Stewart Pruitt, um, her book, Letters of a Homestead Woman. And that one has stuck with me. It's just her hardship in trying to be a homesteader woman on her own, then with a husband, then as a widow. The whole story is just so moving. What she went through, she writes her letters back to her um, cousin, I believe, back in a city. And... The thing that has always stood out to me from that book, you know, there's, there's, I couldn't tell you a quote from this book. I couldn't tell you a quote 
from any of the books that I have recommended today, but I can tell you a quote from this book. And that one is, she's like, you know, there's a great many things that I want, but I don't want them bad enough not to be content with what I already have. Paraphrased. And I love that quote, and I've used it so much in my life. So I really recommend Letters of a Homestead Woman. It's, a, it's an older book, but it's definitely worth reading. Okay, I'm going to do another um, nonfiction. This cup, this mug was for my son. This is Jesus and Coffee. I got this for Christmas from him. This is also another really good, I need some coffee and Jesus this morning mug. Y'all know what I mean if you're a mom. So for this one, I really wanted some kind of devotional, you know, with coffee, we sit down, have our Bible, prayer, meditate, and usually do some kind of devotional, but I couldn't think of one that was easy enough to get out. But one of the things that I have been doing is I use journals for my morning devotions, work, and whatnot. And right now, me and my Salty Sisters group, we're working through the book of Acts. And what journals is, is you basically write out the chapter, verse, everything on one side, and then the other side has questions that you answer. So this one is, let me actually get to a different one. Acts 5, verse 23, and then the questions here for this is verses 23 and 24. How do you think the soldiers and the priests felt? What was God showing them? Verse 29, and I'd have to know what verse 23 said to really answer that. Um, further on, down at verse 29, the question here is, what does this teach us about obedience to human authorities? Oh, that was going to be interesting. Um, so there's just different things here, and then there's enough room for you to write your own thoughts. Um, and we've just been working through the whole Bible doing this. Honestly, writing out scripture has opened up so much to me that I have missed just reading my Bible. And um, I love these so much, and I can't recommend them enough. So that's going to be my recommendation for that one. Y'all, I only have three cups left, so bear with me. Let's go on to the cup that my daughter gave me, I believe for my birthday or Mother's Day a few years ago. This one is Thankful For You, Mom. Uh, since my birthday is April 21st, it does fall around the time when Mother's Day stuff is coming out. So I genuinely don't remember if this was Mother's Day or birthday. Um, but Thankful For You, Mom. And she, Euphemia is the one that does the other videos with me, and she will be having a video come out here on Friday, so stay tuned for that. Um, but for this book, I read, actually while I was nursing her, um, and there was this one line in here about, um, but there's one point in Silas Marner where, by George Eliot, who, where, uh, Epi gets in trouble, and every time she's in trouble, he puts her in the coal shed. Um, uh, that's his punishment. And... Uh, I was listening to the audiobook, and the audiobook went, Epi and Nicole shit, because Epi just finds it delightful, and he's like, I don't know how to punish her. It's so sweet. Um, and so my actually daughter, my Euphemia, would go around as she was getting older, and I was listening to this over and over again, uh, she would go, Epi Dadu, as to kind of um, mimic it. So I'm going to do Silas Marner. If you want like a classic, this one may be a good start. Um, like more of the older classics. Um, this tells the story of Silas Marner, who was wrongfully accused of theft. And he basically walks away from God, he walks away from everything, and then he gets this daughter, Epi, and raises her, and it's just this transformation of this family and all that it entails. And I really, um, I was really moved by this story. I really like it. I wish more of George Eliot's books kind of did a lot what this did. So I recommend that one down to the last two. Okay, so this one is also from my sister. Um, she's a redhead and yes it is from White Christmas if you know what that is. And so we got this one because we actually would watch White Christmas on the day after Thanksgiving. We would go buy a, a real life Christmas tree. My dad would trim you know the bottom branches down and then my sisters and I would actually take those um, branches and we would dance the sister dance because it makes the big old feather things. That's what we did because that's us. Um, but she's my redheaded sister and so and 
she loves Anne of Green Gables and so I decided to recommend this newest one that's been um, released. I recommend the whole Anne series but um, I think many people know about Anne of Green Gables but do you know about this one? The Blythes are quoted and this one is I think her final story that just never got print printed. Um, if you want more of the Blythes, these are more of like the letters and just different things. So they, they kind of combined it all and so it's just a little bit more if you want to have a little bit more. Okay, the last one I'm going to show you, I just got this for my birthday this year. Um, my sister, my two sisters just went home after having a lovely time with us and this was my gift for my sister. It's this little tiny mug and it's so pretty and it has a little cover so you can steep it and then you can take the cover off. You have this little cup inside it so it can steep through and then you can set it down on the little tray so that it's not going everywhere and then you can have your cup of tea. Now this honestly cup reminds me so much of Diary of an Edwardian Lady but I have not completely read that one. But one of the books that we have been reading in our homeschool has been one of my favorites that we've ever done and that is Parables from Nature by Margaret Gatty. Gatty? Gatty? Um, this one is, it's like it says, it's sermons in the form of nature's parables and some of them are so moving some of them are like okay but some of them just get down and are very thought-provoking and I love this one so much even if you don't do a Charlotte Mason education this is recommended in there even if you don't do that I still think this is would be one worth picking up and enjoying um, it definitely tells um, those Again, those sermon type things in a story form. So if you just want, tell me like it is, it may not be the book for you. But it definitely has a lot of subtle messages in there that um, kind of opens up like a, a flower, a petal, until you really get the, the heart of the story. So I really like this. I would recommend this, um, to, and especially to the older ones. Just lots of thinking and just reflections that can enhance our spiritual life. So that's it for this video. Whew, I know it was long. I don't think there's going to be much I can edit out, but I hope this gives you several book recommendations and I hope that you have enjoyed this. And until next time, have another cup of coffee and read another chapter. Bye!